Okay, good morning everybody for this new uh, session of Science at 10. Today we are going to talk about something very profound and below the ground. And it's a very important point because uh, the, the work that is done by Sebastian for his PhD and, and, and for some of the C4 projects, it's about determining what is happening below ground uh, when you deforest and what, what is happening at the root level. And it's something that is largely missing in terms of data, I mean, so if you look at the IPCC, they give you a sort of a shoot root ratio, but it's pretty vague and it's built on very few data. So hopefully with the work with Sebastian and, and all the effort he has been doing, digging holes everywhere, it will give you some information of what is happening when you convert forest into oil palm and at the root system level. So Sebastian, 10 minutes. Thank you very much. So, um, I will first give you a little bit of background information on what are peatlands and why we actually have to care about these. Um, although that might be familiar to, to some, of, some of you, but to some others not. Um, then I will talk about <coughs> my actual research, what I'm doing. Um, there are two parts uh, where, where we'll talk about carbon stocks and then about um, below ground dynamics. All right, um, so peatlands cover just 0.25% um, of the Earth's surface, but it's estimated to um, contain 3% of the global soil carbon stock in the world um, and 20% of the global peat carbon. Um, these peatlands um, are a very unique ecosystem, right? Um, so we have very high water table level, um, therefore little drainage, and that creates anaerobic conditions, so the decomposition rates are, are really low, and combine that with high production rates of, of biomass. So we have a buildup of organic matter, so it goes up and up and up over centuries. Um, and so in Southeast Asia we find um, these dome, domes, these peat domes, like really, really big areas um, where the soil is actually just almost carbon. Um, within these domes, um, and this is a huge difference to, to boreal and temporal um, peat, for, uh, peat areas, uh, we have forests. And um, as you can imagine, because it's, it's dome shaped, we have different forest types. Um, but these peat areas here in Southeast Asia are under threat. Um, in the last decades, 25% um, of all deforestation in Southeast Asia occurred on these peatlands, and deforestation rates are as high as 2.2% per year. So 2.2% of the forest cover is lost per year. Um, and the main drivers are um, oil palm plantation and plantations for pulpwood. Right. Um, so what happens? in this land use change from, from forest to all palm. So first, these forests gets locked, all the timber gets extracted, then uh, the area gets burned, canals um, are built to, to drain these peatlands to make it suitable for agricultural land. And that alone causes a lot of um, carbon emissions because when you lower the water table level, like remember it's just, just organic matter, um, the conditions change from anaerobic to aerobic, and therefore the composition, uh, decomposition rates increase, and a lot of carbon is emitted. So we tried in our research uh, to first, as Robert mentioned, um, to reduce the paucity of, of data on, on peatlands, because there are just a handful of, of literature available on how much biomass is there actually out there in these forests. Um, and we try to um, also look at uh, the intermediate state of um, forest degradation and, of course, the final stage of oil palm plantation. And uh, in the first bit, we, we focus on the total uh, phytomass, which is um, above ground biomass, trees, saplings, shrubs, um, below ground biomass, roots, and a necromass, which is uh, dead wood, branches, leaves, and so on. So um, 
we did a lot of um, tree measurements and uh, and um, try to try to qualify that for the both ground part that was fairly easy there are methods out there um, already done done hundreds of times but for for the roots because they're hidden in the soil you can't actually see them you can't can't take a diameter tape and just just measure them and, and um, apply a equation to that um, so we first did uh, destruct sampling so we just dig holes in the ground, sort the roots, measure them. Um, but of course, that gives us just part of the picture. As you can imagine, like in a forest, um, if you dig holes at random points, um, you get the root biomass between trees. But what about all the roots which are just underneath the tree? So um, we did some destructive sampling. Uh, we sacrificed some trees uh, for the greater good of research and uh, developed um, atomic equations to actually quantify all that. And uh, that led to very interesting results. Um, so in terms of roots, 10% um, of the total phytomass are roots in primary forest. And that increases uh, within this land use transition from uh, primary forest to degraded forest to all farm plantation to 15 and 80%. But um, as you would imagine, um, you lose a lot of carbon when, by, this, by this land use conversion. So we estimated that uh, 215 tons carbon per hectare are stored um, in these primary peatstone forest. And already if you, if you degrade that forest and drain that, you lose 100 tons of carbon per hectare. And it gets even more severe when you, when you convert that to all plantation, then you lose as much as 180 tons carbon per hectare. So this is, a, this is a very interesting. Um, we, we hope that um, this gets picked up and um, my manuscript on that is um, currently under review and uh, will hopefully be published next year, uh, no, by the end of this year. Um, and um, this, this con contributes um, also to, to um, MRV mechanisms within RED, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we are looking uh, forward to, to see that, uh, that we can reduce all this uncertainty which currently exists within, within this land use change on peatland. Second of all, um, we, we tried to, to quantify root dynamics. So not only what is actually there, but also how, how it changes within, within a year. So we looked at, at root production rates, root mortality rates, and root decomposition rates within primary forest, degraded forest, and all palm plantation. Why is this, this important? Well, um, if you look at, at carbon emissions, uh, you, you mainly look at what, what's going out, but it's also important to, to look at the balance. So you have to see what's, what's, what's getting in, into the soil of carbon to have, to have a good estimate of actually what's going on, and roots are a big part of that. Um, we carried out um, different methods to, to quantify that. Um, unfortunately, they uh, give some sort of contrasting results at the moment. Um, I'm currently working on that to make, make sense of that. But um, our best estimates um, are that root production is highest in the oil palm and lowest in the degraded forest with the primary forest in the middle. Whereas root mortality, so root death, is highest in the primary forest and goes down to um, oil palm plantation and, and degraded forest. What is more interesting um, than just looking at production and mortality rates is looking at the ratio. So how much, how much dies, how, much, how many roots die, and how, how many grow in the year. And we found that uh, in primary forest, it's in steady state. So that's kind of what you would expect. Um, in the degraded forest, um, it's, less, it's less than one. So that means that more root death occurs than new, new root production. 
and uh, we believe so far that uh, this is due to, to the drainage effect. So when you, when you drain that area, of course, then, then more soil is available for, for decomposition, therefore uh, more nutrients are available. So, so the, the plants, the trees, they, they shift their, their carbon allocation from below ground to above ground. And um, in the old palm, um, it's the reverse. So, so the ratio is below one, meaning that uh, there's, there's more growth than death. And um, that, that could be um, an indicator um, that uh, the, root, uh, the, the palms are allocating more carbon in low ground because um, of, we believe that this could be due to the pest we have there. That's like, you have to imagine there's like little root pest which, which eats the roots and therefore the palm is, is fighting that and therefore shifts the carbon allocation towards below ground. Um, and then in the last stage, uh, we looked at decomposition in, uh, in primary forest and oil palm to see if there's a difference. But um, actually, um, there are slightly, slight, slightly higher rates in, uh, in the oil palm plantation, but they are not statistically significant. So um, that's another very interesting finding. Um, we hope that all this um, contributes uh, to, uh, to the lack of data and to our understanding on um, how these, these tropical peatlands are formed and, and how they function, but also um, how land use change, this severe threat to this ecosystem, affects all these ecosystem functioning and, of course, also um, the carbon emissions. Question. And uh, if you have a question, you need to stand up so that the camera can see you. Mariana. They give you a mic also. I need a microphone. Um, thank you for the interesting findings. Uh, a lot of work to measure roots. So I guess you've been uh, uh, full of mud for a number of months. Um, so what was the main finding? Did you find something that, that would really change the way we assume about the proportion of carbon stored in the roots? For example, everybody uses something between 20 and 25% for roots. So is your number radically different? And are those numbers radically different between natural forest, and old, plantation, old palm plantations, and degraded forest? Um, so you're talking about root shoot ratios, right? Yeah. Um, yes, they are. So uh, the current estimate for tropical forests is about uh, 0.21, and we found in the primary forest a ratio of 0.14, so, so much lower. Um, and uh, this ratio decreases from um, primary forest to degrade forest to all plantation. Increases. Yeah, but, but the ratio increased mainly because you have less above ground biomass. It's not because you have more below ground biomass. Yeah. No question? Everybody is stunned by the findings or? Yes, Aaron. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. I have two kind of separate questions. One is, from your destructive sampling methods, do you now have a means for uh, estimating what that below ground carbon is? Uh, by, can you now look at your DBH and it can, it, do you have equations that can now be applied more easily in, in a range of peatland forest sectors? And separately, if I understand correctly, the main impact of land use conversion in these contexts is drainage of the land. I didn't fully understand what the additional impact of the oil palm plantation is as, as, a, as, as opposed to the actual drainage that precedes the establishment of the oil palm plantation. So if you could just clarify that, please. Sure. Um, so the, the equation um, we developed was kind of a, like a two-stage approach. So first, um, we we had an um, equation for relating below ground biomass just underneath the tree uh, to DBH. But uh, because we couldn't harvest some, 
that many trees. Uh, we had a DBH range from, from 3 to uh, 15, which is fairly small. But this is all we could do because it's, as you can imagine, like these peat lands swarms and you can't put heavy machine in there. Um, and we didn't have the means for that. Um, so then, then we came up with another idea and related uh, the root shoot ratios to DBH, which then could potentially be applied to, to a broader range of diamond classes. Um, and yeah, we, we, we did, did that. Um, and this, this can be used. Um, we, have, we have a good, good fit for, for our equation to our data. Um, but um, because this is just valid for, for, for like below the tree, you have to do additional measurement or take a, take a fixed value for um, what, is, what is going on between trees. So that, that would be like a two stage sampling. But it gives you a, a very good estimate of um, to your second questions, um, yes, drainage um, is is a m major component. Um, we still have to to look at it um, specifically um, if this actually has has a crucial inf impact on on the root dynamics. But um, as I said before in in the first part of my talk. Um, the effect of, of land use conversion is, is also like reducing the total biomass and um, 180 tons per hectare is, uh, is a big number. So um, yeah, that, that has a, also a huge impact, the, the change of, of, um, of species, so to say, and like um, density of, of, of trees and palms. Peter? Thanks. Um, I'm curious about relationships with what I would call a life cycle analysis of, of these uh, systems, because you said that, that primary forests are more or less steady state, which we would expect. And then, depending on the changes that are applied, you will get a reduced carbon stock on the site. But you will also get uh, over time, um, uh, yields that are being removed from, from those areas, both in terms of, of, of wood and in terms of uh, 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 palm seeds and, and, and all, all of that. So have you done any life cycle analysis of the carbon budgets on, uh, over time? Unfortunately, uh, we just had three sites. So the primary forest, uh, the degraded forest, which is also influenced by drainage, and then a, um, a seven to eight year old on pump plantation. So um, our results can, can just be valid for that. Um, so if you, if you look at uh, the total rotation uh, period of an all pump plantation, um, which can be up to 25 years, um, that might change. Um, <clears throat> But there are a lot of lot of factor factors you have to have to incorporate into, into that, um, which is which is management practices in the old pump plantation. It's um, it's the control of the water table level. Some plantations do it better than others, um, and of course pests are can be a very um, significant factor in in this equation. If you if you look at the total life cycle, I guess. There's a big debate these days about the, now there's a new concept which is a HCS, you know, a high carbon stock uh, forest. Uh, seems to be a sort of a, an offset or an offspring of the HCV, the high conservation value forest. And that's uh, this, you have these people, uh, everybody shouting numbers at each other. No, it's 30 tons, 42. So what's your take in the sense of about this high carbon stock, because if it's 30 ton per hectare, then we can consider that an empire plantation is a high carbon stock forest. Or uh, how would you see the sort of policy recommendation you would give to the Indonesian government based on your finding on, on pit swamp? Um, yeah, so in the Alpam, there's, when we, when we look at just stocks, there's considerably less carbon, definitely. Um, as compared to a primary forest. Um, and my concern is always like, 
um, when, when people measure carbon stocks, how do they do that, um, which kind of methods they, they use, and, and this, all, of course, has an impact on, on the estimate. Um, I think we, we, did a, we did a good job. Um, we, we have uh, reliable estimates. We used um, the most common methods and the most approved, so to say. And um, yeah. Yeah, but the, that's the method. But what would you say? I mean, do we continue? Uh, it is a good idea to clear a forest to plant oil palm? No. <laughs> then, then, then your recommendation should be should, should, should not do it. Um, yeah, don't clear the peat forest. Um, use the use the existing bare land, and which I believe is still available. I mean, if you if you if you if you drive to uh, through the province of Jambi, uh, there's so many so much wasteland where, where there's nothing planted, and then um, in, uh, instead of just encroaching forest and have, having to deal with all these issues of, of drainage and, and and pests and stuff. Um, just, just use the existing land and, and sort stuff out. Yes. Can I ask you just a follow-up question? Because I, I, maybe I don't understand exactly part of your result. You, you indicated that de carbon decomposition rates in the uh, drained uh, and in the, in the degraded forest that has been drained, as well as the peatland, is not significantly higher than in the primary forest, and yet. Wouldn't one expect that through the drainage you'd have more aerobic um, respiration and therefore more uh, degrad like uh, breakdown of carbon and release into the atmosphere? This is generally much of what I think m motivates this research, right? Like, so c can you provide some potential hypotheses for why your findings would seem to contradict that expectation? Is it the site specific, or is it part of the life cycle, the the timing of the sampling? I don't know. Yeah, actually, I w I, initially I was expecting a huge difference because because of, of the change in, in um, water table level and therefore in soil conditions. Um, but my hypothesis is that um, because palms and trees are such different species, um, that it has to do with with uh, with the actual um, chemical composition of the roots. Between between trees and palms, why one is uh, is decomposing at the same rate as the other, although the soil comp uh, the soil conditions are, are the same, but we still have to test that. I I, I think you have to consider that for the and that's something that we have been discussed for a long time with Eve, and that fundamentally you have peat swamp forests that are intact, or you have something else. I don't think that there is no such thing as a degraded peat swamp forest. As soon as you touch these things, they all die. And that's why you have what is happening in your degraded forest. What you have as a degraded forest, you come back in, you will come back in 25 years from now, it will be something else than a peat swamp forest. It's not a system that under the current condition can go through a succession phase and reestablish a peat swamp forest, unfortunately. So that's one more reason why we should not clear this forest or touch them because they are going to disappear. Uh, so and in, and in terms of the trees and palms, I mean, you have to really, people have to remember that palms have no secondary growth. They don't store carbon in roots. All the palms, the root palms are, are very short-lived and, and they just produce active, they are the equivalent of the fine root system of the trees, not the sort of the stock and the carbon of the trees. Yes. Uh, continuing, to continue talking about the decomposition rates of in the roots. So, for the methods, you put the kind of the roots or uh, uh, biomass in the soil at the different depths or in the same uh, depth. Because I'm thinking about if you put we, if we put the kind of the at the different depth, so the decomposition rates also different. And have you already compared with the other kind of the results? I believe that there is a one values from the Micronesian peatlands about the decomposition from the roots. So is it comparable or your uh, result is higher or lower compared to Micronesian peatlands? So yes, um, we did it by depth. 
So um, I, I have three different depths, very close to the surface, uh, 25 centimeters and 50 centimeters. Um, we saw a slight decrease in decomposition rates, but again, they were not significantly different, um, which, is, which is also surprising for me. Um, we, we still have to figure out why that is. Um, and the same in the in the forest and in the in the plantation. Um, the rates, um, I if I compare that to the Micronesian uh, peatlands, uh, they are higher. Um, yeah. Um, one reason um, why um, it, uh, it's not really recommended to, to, to do anything on the peatlands is, is the, uh, the effect of subsidence. The fact that 100 years down the line, maybe an area which has been converted to agriculture will be underwater because it will be below sea level. Did you look at various, did you look at this aspect within the the various land uses that you've looked at in primary forest, I mean, presumably in primary forest it will not subside, but what about the other land uses, the degraded forest in the oil palm? Did you measure this? Um, no, we didn't, uh, but I can refer you to, uh, to another expert which is in this room. Um, I guess uh, you want to talk to Sofian about that. Okay. <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. So the uh, the impact of the sea level is uh, different with the different of the uh, peatlands. So, for example, in Indonesia we have kind of uh, two separates of the peatlands ecosystem. The first one is coastal peatlands, and the the other one is inland peatlands. So the coastal peatlands, peatlands like uh, Jambi, uh, we maybe is uh, less than 100 or 60 kilometers from the coastlines, and the other line, uh, the other peatlands is uh, coast, uh, inland peatlands like the Sentarum area. So the impact of the sea level is also different. Uh, for example, if uh, 60,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago the, there is kind of the sea level, so the the first affected by the sea level is the inland peatlands. So because of the very the, the latitude is not really big difference from the coast until the, the inland, so there is kind of a low gradient. So the first one affected by the sea level is the inland peatland. So there is the first uh, kind of sites that uh, peatlands develop is in uh, inland peatlands. And the other site is the coastal, coastal peatlands is uh, more affected later, maybe 6,000 years ago until 7,000 years ago. So based on the kind of the peat age char uh, characteristics, the, maybe the inner peatlands started to develop in 20,000 years ago and in coastal peatlands like the 8,000 years ago. So, but I'm not really quite sure what's the, what's the main drivers of that uh, sea, level, sea level rise. It was more about subs subsidence. Subsidence. Uh, I think there is a, in, uh, I'm not quite sure what's the affected by, it, but because the kind of the research, the first one is the uh, subsidence based uh, based on the Danish is the consolidations. Later on is the decompositions, but there is no. I mean, I didn't find any literatures or research comparing both sides. Uh, what's kind of the first phase of the decomposition or uh, uh, subsidence? But I think fifty. Um, but. But in your current paper, which was um, just um, published uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, didn't you didn't you use simulation studies um, with with your model on on all palm plantation as well? Yeah, to, to I did. See the effect effect of land use change. I did some uh, kind of the modeling of the impact of the local, uh, oil palm plantations compared to the nat natural peatlands, but I didn't include the subsidence or sea level things like that. So still kind of uh, what's the drivers of that. I just kind of, uh, for my simulations, I just remove the peatlands, maybe 20 centimeter because of the oil palm plantations. It's not like the, we, what's the drivers of the subsidence. Thank you. 10.30, we are reaching the end of our science at 10. Uh, thanks to everybody, thanks to Sebastian, and uh, give him a big clap again. And uh, the snacks are still there, thank you.